Abruptly firing the superintendent could get more expensive for the Douglas County School District. He's hired an attorney and issued a warning. While we explained that the attempts to name the teachers who walked out in protest may not be over, those names still could be released to the public. A move to open up free and reduced school lunches had an unintended consequence. It's made it harder to see which school communities are in need. It's time for the annual attempt to ditch daylight saving in Colorado. Can't ever seem to get the time of day in the state legislature. And we wrap up your at-home Olympics with the best and worst performances yet. For one final night, this is next, but before. Douglas County Schools paid a quarter million dollars to fire its superintendent without cause. It could be getting more expensive than that. Former Superintendent Corey Wise has hired a lawyer who's warning the school board of a possible lawsuit. One thing that could be an issue is that school board president Mike Peterson told a talk radio show that they could have fired Wise for cause, suggesting publicly that he'd done something worthy of termination. That was never said in any board meeting. Wise was fired after a 26-year career in Dugco schools, capped by one year as superintendent. Newly elected conservative school board majority abruptly fired Wise. During that meeting, they never really articulated a reason. They later said that he was not sufficiently loyal to them. Firing Wise without cause required the school district to pay out a year's salary, nearly $250,000. But here's what school board president Mike Peterson later told former district attorney and talk radio host George Brockler on 710K in U.S. If we wanted to just do a change, we, we could have done that in December. We could have come in, um, removed the, uh, the superintendent for cause and installed somebody else. But that's not that was not a plan. And that's not what we did. We asked Nine News legal analyst Whitney Trailer if the school board president saying that publicly, indicating that they believe that Wise committed a fireable offense in his job, if that might create legal exposure for the district. What he's saying from a legal perspective is we had a legitimate basis to terminate him that would have allowed us to, to, to do so. But why didn't they do that? Why didn't they terminate with cause if they're saying they had cause? So for Corey Wise, he might say, look, this is a public defamatory statement. Somebody telling me they could fire me for cause is a statement that's going to harm my reputation. Because when I hear for cause, I think you did something wrong. So that could potentially open the door for other litigation. The school board majority plans to move quickly to pick a new superintendent. They want finalists within weeks. So it's worth clearing up some reports that Douglas County Schools decided they, they would not release the names of teachers who were absent on the day of a protest against the conservative school board. A lot of teachers were concerned about that. The school district and the school board actually made no such decision to protect the teachers' names. Those names may still be released. Doug Coast Schools had warned their teachers that the names were about to be made public. The next night, it didn't happen. And that's because the person who filed the open records request for the names withdrew the request. The school district and the school board didn't have to take any action on it. Another request to out those teachers could already be in the pipeline and a district spokeswoman says she couldn't say how future requests would be handled. The district could choose to deny the request and risk a lawsuit, or just allow the names to go public. Despite confusing reports to the contrary, nothing that we know suggests that Doug Coe schools could or would block the release of teachers' names. Schools' free and reduced cost meals, they not only provide nutrition for kids, that also serves as a measure of need and that provides funding to schools across Colorado. What happened when all those meals were opened up to all students during the pandemic is that it threw off the count. That's impacted school budgets across our state by millions of dollars. Anusha Roy takes a look at what happened. USDA opened up free and reduced school meals to everyone during the pandemic, and that helped with a big concern. They're not missing out on their food unless they're not at school. But the Jeffco School District noticed a drop in the number of kids enrolled in the program. Beth Wallace with the district knew there were definitely kids who needed it, so something else was going on. There's just students that we, you know, just didn't reach. Some kids automatically qualify, others turn in applications for free and reduced meals. And that paperwork helps keep count of at-risk students. But when the program opened up universally, a lot of families didn't think they needed to turn in the application. We for sure, there's an undercount going on there. That was happening across the state. Just under 45,000 students 
we think we're not counted. Since funding is allocated per student, it added up to $91.4 million less for districts across the state. But most districts have fund balance and reserve. Sheridan School District number two saw a nearly 10% drop in applications and started using grants and other sources of funding to cover their costs. There's also more at stake. All of your 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 testing and any fees within the school districts are waived. Wallace says some families are missing out on the help, especially this school year. Because of how we do our counts and our carryover, it, we didn't feel the biggest impact until this year. So Jeffco also saw families moving out of the district because it was just simply too expensive to live there or opting to homeschool or just simply move somewhere near during COVID. But they said the biggest factor was not turning in that paperwork. So there is a bill to get that supplemental funding and help close that gap. It just passed heading to the governor. And that means Kyle schools could start seeing some more money starting next month. And obviously families that have tight finances don't need one more thing to do. But if they're able to continue to fill out the paperwork they can still do this right yeah jeffco school district said if you're realizing oh shoot i didn't turn that in do it now they're they're going to take those pa that paperwork to the end of the year and then they'll be able to connect you to those other resources as well right, nusha roy thank you very much prosecutors in boulder county have ordered a company to stop advertising for martial fire victims to join a lawsuit against the county and the city of boulder they say misleading claims in that ad violate colorado's consumer protection act According to Kevin Vaughn from our Nine Wants to Know team, a company called Professional Forest Management out of Pueblo had claimed in these ads that an underground coal seam fire was the cause of the Marshall Fire and that Boulder County and the city of Boulder were legally and financially liable. The coal seam fire is one potential cause that's under investigation. And prosecutors noted in a cease and desist letter that those government agencies would likely be shielded from liability anyway. The company trying to round up victims for a lawsuit told Nine Wants to Know they'll drop that advertising. Next goes back to its regular time slot, 6 p.m. starting Monday. Being off by an hour is, is, is weird, but you know that because daylight saving time, right? Politics guy Marshall Zellinger looks at the newest version of a bill that would outlaw the time shift. Colorado lawmakers have spent years debating about time. This is a completely different bill. This dude, Democratic State Senator Jeff Bridges and Republican State Senator Ray Scott have a new version of a bill to get Colorado to stop changing clocks. This is different in that it moves us to year-round standard time, not daylight time. We can't go to year-round daylight time because Congress won't let us. Give me an hour of your time. Former Republican State Senator Greg Brophy tried multiple times, unsuccessfully, to have Colorado stay on daylight saving time, which would have also required U.S. Congress to approve. Greg has spent a great deal of his life dedicated to this issue. If lawmakers approve this new version, it would be put on the November ballot for voters to decide if we stay on standard time, meaning the time that it is right now. So we'd still have those early 4.30 p.m. sunsets in the winter, and earlier sunsets in the summer. So it means that in the summer, yes, the sun would set at 8 p.m. instead of 9 p.m., which means you could actually get your kids to go to bed on time. Watch this Google Earth demonstration. If we were always on standard time on the first day of summer, June 21st, this sunrise would be at 4.30 a.m. Sunset, 7.30. I think this is the kind of issue that people of Colorado deserve to have a direct say in. It's something that directly affects their life. The Secretary of State's office tracks which groups lobby for and against legislation. The last few years, when the bill has been to keep daylight saving time, meaning keeping our summer clocks, Colorado Ski Country has repeatedly lobbied against going to the later sunrise. A spokesman for the group was unable to talk today about support or opposition to keeping the earlier sunrise. Former Republican State Senator Greg Brophy, he's traveling today, but he told me by text he still prefers that daylight time, the summertime, and that trying to stay on winter time year round will draw opposition that otherwise would be silent. And one group that I reached out to about that was the golf industry. Yeah. Uh, they don't have a position yet, but can you imagine what would be more popular? 7.30 twilight golf uh -huh. versus 4.30 a.m. golf. Would we, would we have to move our morning show to like 3.30 in the morning then? Would that, would that create a hardship for like Gary Shapiro? If businesses start having you come in <laughs> earlier, shifting rush hour traffic an hour yeah. earlier, then yeah. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't want to laugh about this because I mean, this affects people's lives in big time ways. And 
clearly big money interests are very interested in it as well. Oh, yeah. And there's a, a study that we'll get into if you want to look at the web story about energy. And Indiana has different counties that sometimes mirror, like some standard, some daylight. Anyways, yeah. energy, we're better off supposedly from that study on daylight than standard. All right. I love this debate. It's just it's a nice change of pace from the normal stuff. Marshall, thank you. A common cause of missed class time for kids in Colorado is dental issues, of all things, like pain or embarrassment because of a lack of dental care. So that's something that we can work together to help solve. And together, you have raised almost $22,000 this week for KIND, nonprofit Kids in Need of Dentistry. They provide low or no-cost dental care for kids across Colorado. They go right into underserved communities to provide on-site dentistry to stabilize kids' health. And this work changes lives. You scan the QR code on your screen or text the word THANKS to 303-871-1491. You can get in on this week's Word of Thanks microgiving campaign. There are kids out there in Colorado who just want to be able to focus and learn, and they can't because of unnecessary pain, and we can help change that. It has changed so much that it's been unrecognizable, so it's been amazing to try to bring um, the pieces of the culture back together in this area. Gentrification has whitewashed a lot of the historically black Five Points neighborhood in Denver. A new museum hopes to serve as a space for black Coloradans for years to come. And this is the closing ceremony for your at-home Olympics segment with some metal-worthy performances and some DNFs. How do you DNF at curling? Well, we'll show you next. Daisy, come here, come here, come here. It's time for dinner. Come here, come here, come and get it. Well, that was kind of mean, wasn't it? We bid a fond farewell to your own Olympic attempts. It has been a pleasure sharing Colorado's at-home Olympics, but not the Olympics. If we said the Olympics, then they could sue us. Marie's husband, Gary, giving the old kitchen curling the old college try at their home in Wellington. I honestly think the top Olympic achievement is how many of you have tricked your families into cleaning while they think they're curling. Love the, love the machine not only sent us this video of their attempt at curling, but added their own slow-mo instant replay. This is absolutely fantastic. They asked that we give their curling coach, her mom, Fariba, a shout out for everything she did, which based on that clip was not much. We do love this video that Nancy sent us of her five-year-old son, gr grandson, Levi, and the big air he's catching doing, what are we going to call this? We're going to call this the skeleton? Sure, let's call this skeleton. It's the Eagle Crest High School, uh, Eagle, Eagle Crest High School last weekend. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who uh, caught big air or accidentally cleaned their kitchen in pursuit of the at-home Olympics. Ah, beautiful start to the weekend. Plenty of blue skies, some sunshine for us, and there is more where that came from. Few clouds, okay, up into the northern and central mountains. A couple of quick little flurries, but overall, this ridge of high pressure is going to warm us up. In fact, we're going to be looking at temperatures well above our average. Soak in the weekend while you can, because I do have a few changes on the horizon. Tomorrow, mid to upper 50s across the northeastern plains, 60s in Lamar and Springfield, and pretty comfortable up into the mountains, too. By Monday, that's when it all changes. We have a strong cold front that moves through. We'll start to see some snow and then bitterly cold temperatures Tuesday through Thursday. Right now, a couple of feet possible in the mountains and three to six inches here in the metro. Here are the changes. Yes, yeah, single digits on Tuesday, sub-zero readings overnight into Wednesday. We'll slowly climb out of that deep freeze. Black Coloradans built something lasting in five points. Gentrification is chipped away at that. This is a space that we grew up in. This is a space that um, we started a lot of things in the culture. A new space goes beyond celebrating culture to create a place where Black Coloradans can work on future contributions to our community. That's next.
Black Coloradans put Five Points on the map. It's a cultural beacon known across America. The next big thing to come out of Five Points might originate at the place that our Byron Reed found today. Experiencing the history of a neighborhood. That's an amazing piece to bring right here in the Five Points area. Is a way for some to understand its past. This is a space that we grew up in. This is a space that um, we started a lot of things in the culture. Charlie Billingsley is a co-founder of the Culture Museum in downtown Denver, a pop-up immersive art space that celebrates moments in black culture. She says it's a museum that's trying to make a difference. Yeah, I think it's very important to bring back minority-owned spaces in this area. It has changed so much that it's been unrecognizable, so it's been amazing to try to bring um, the pieces of the culture back together. This is our 90s cartoon room. Billingsley says the temporary space has been open for about a month. Right now we're here until about mid-March. And features 10 local artists sharing their experiences. She says it's an important space that's bringing the community back together. I think um, they'll walk away with a sense of togetherness, um, a sense that the community and the culture is still here. Billingsy says she's already planning for what's next. And actually start adding black owned businesses in the space to start selling their products and services. She wants to make sure everyone in the community feels supported. We like to create experiences. By creating a space, making its own history in a neighborhood with a past. So not just walking around seeing the art, but actually being able to touch and feel and interact with it and take pictures with it and be a part of it and actually be a part of history. For next. Just all kind of cool stuff that everyone can enjoy. I'm Byron Reed. Billingsley told Byron they're planning to have that market space for black owned businesses up and running by the end of the year. Good news and your feedback takes us home next. Hey guys, next producer Kevin Larson stopping by one last time as the Olympics come to a close. The half-pipe event is full of Coloradans, including one skier who had a nearly fatal crash just over one year ago. He shook it off like a true Coloradan and is now the top-ranked half-pipe skier in the world. More on his story on the Olympic Zone with Tom Green at 5.30. It's Friday, so 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., your good news will make headlines here. Often it's small joys that serve to remind us that whatever is in the news... Life's going on in beautiful little ways. Holly's just wrapping up her third training week for a marathon. She's going to run at Big Sur in California, so she's putting in miles in the mountains around Tennessee Pass. Dwayne's joy this week was a run-in with Colorado's wild road cleaners up in Rocky Mountain National Park. Katie got the backyard safari. Bobcat in her yard in Highlands Ranch just hanging out, probably looking for snacks. She told us that her Bernie's Mountain Dog, Charlie, was less than pleased. Two pieces of unsigned feedback tonight. We'll take unsigned feedback. That's fine, especially if it's not mean. First note was about ringing the dinner bell for dogs, because apparently the dogs eat when our theme music plays. If you have single-handedly destroyed the dinner routine of multiple dogs. And an unsigned note saying, Be being of Icelandic descent, it's been a lot of fun listening to you two try to pronounce those words. See you next time.